Z-banding. That annoying issue where you get horizontal striping every few layers. It can be difficult to track down what exactly causes this issue, and it's common on many budget printers. In this video, we'll go over what causes Z-banding and what we can do to mitigate those issues. Coming up on Independent Verification. In order to understand Z-banding, we need to be familiar with the term Z-wobble. In order to understand Z-wobble, we'll need to look at the back end of our Cartesian printer, particularly the lead screws. Z-wobble refers to when the lead screw moves right or left, forward or backwards, from the stepper coupler to the Z-axis rod, when the X-axis gantry moves up or down, you'll notice that you'll get a slight stirring motion from the z-axis rod. That is your z-wobble. This constant z-wobbling will result in an artifact known as z-banding. Z-banding will look a little something like this. You'll notice the separate bands as we go further up on our print. Now, what's notable is that this z-banding will actually match up with the distance between the threads on your lead screw. So then the question we need to ask ourselves is, what exactly is causing this vertical misalignment of our ball screw or Acme screw? Well, if you're working with a cheap printer like an Ender 3, you almost assuredly have one particular issue. Take a look at where your ball screw or your Acme screw mates up to your x-axis gantry. Let's take a note of something. It mounts to it right here. Now, this piece of metal right here connects and it's a 90 degree angle, or at least it should be. Take something that you know is 90 degrees and check it. Most of the time, you'll find that the bend from this piece of metal from the factory is not a straight 90 degrees. It's not square. And that is going to cause your lead screw to be crooked. If that piece of metal where your lead screw connects to your x-axis gantry is crooked, then your lead screw might bend this way, or it might bend this way. And that is going to cause z-wobble. I'll put a nice picture of what my x-axis gantry used to look like. Now, what you're seeing here is a bad bend. It's not 90 degrees. It's only a few degrees off. But that was enough to cause substantial z-wobble and thus result in z-banding. This is a pretty common issue straight from the factory. Oh, and this goes doubly for dual z systems. You'll need to make sure that it's a 90 degree bend for both the left and the right side of your printer. But wait, we're not done yet. Because there's another thing that can happen that'll also contribute to the misalignment of your lead screws. Now this particular printer is running linear rails on every axis, but this will apply to those of you who are still using V-slot rollers. Now let's take a closer look at something. Notice the spacing right here and down here and over here in the back side you can't really see it, but there's three spaces. Now on a standard printer you'll have three V-slot rollers, two on the outside and one on the inside. In this case, we need to look at the distance between the front and the back. Let's tighten up the camera here so I can show you a little bit better. This piece right here. Now, to tra traditionally, this is where your V-slot roller would be, but if you're running linear rails like I am, you just have a spacer. Now, notice that this spacer connects the front and the back of the x-axis gantry. Also notice that this x-axis gantry connects to the lead screw. Now, here's the thing. This spacer is a predetermined distance, but it's not always the perfect distance. If it's too short, the lead screw will tilt like this. It'll be pulled inwards because we have a fixed point at the bottom where our stepper motor is. Now, if it's spaced too wide, it'll bend out this way, which means we have to shim 
this particular piece just right so that we can get it straight up and down. This can be achieved using just a few washers. Now, this will mean you have to take apart your x-axis gantry a few times to get it just right. I've taken mine apart probably more times than I care to count when diagnosing this particular issue, but it is something that you're going to want to do. Once you do that, you should be golden. Almost all your Z-banding issues are going to derive from some sort of misalignment with the frame and the lead screw. So getting everything aligned is going to take time. It's a pain in the butt, but you will love the results when you're done. Now, if your prints don't look perfect, don't despair. The reality is almost no print is going to be perfect. And the reason I say that is because anyone with the right lighting and the right angle can make just about any print look beautiful. The reality is even the best printers, when you show it in the right light, will show some sort of artifact. Now, let's take this print for example. This was done after I aligned everything on this printer. And even this isn't perfect perfect. But, if we zoom in, right about here, hey, that's not bad, right? It's looking pretty swifty. But if we get really close on it, you may be able to detect a few slight Z-bands. But let's put that up against what we were working with before. That's a pretty good difference. And there you have it. The two most common reasons why I think Z-banding occurs in something like an Ender 3. If this video was helpful to you, please leave a like. If you have questions, leave a comment. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, subscribe. Until next time, measure twice, print once.